Hi guys, today we're going to do the last uh, floral on the purple spread. So this is going to be a, a few orchids. So we're using the same sort of, you know, purples, but a slightly different color scheme. So we're doing a lighter version sort of, and one of them will be white. So you can kind of see how uh, to paint the lighter colors and we're using these gorgeous uh, Sedona and Lilac or Sedona and Sugalite mixes which is basically a burnt sienna and violet and then here we are using going to use some of these colors as well just for accents at the end Okay, so as always, I'm going to sketch this out for you first. So we start with, uh, you know, there's different ways to sketch. And so you can also just sort of uh, do a round sort of ellipse shape or an oval, sort of a sideways oval to see where you want to place the, the flower first and then put all these things in. But I'm just starting with the top petal and then the side petals. So you know like i said there's different points of reference and different ways that you can get the shapes and the spacing right i'm just starting with the top petal and then i'm putting in the the curves for the side petals and so you can take as long as you like to do this step it is an important step because it sort of um you know this is the shape of the flower and then once you learn shapes you know that's when you can go back and start sort of the more looser florals and the more um, impressionistic style because you kind of know the structure and the form that you're looking for so it's very difficult to jump straight into loose florals if you haven't sort of explored the actual structure of a flower um, you know it gives you a lot more knowledge on how to create that loosely if that makes sense like I think a lot of the the um, you know old masters they started with structurally correct painting and sketching and then they were able to loosen that up and develop that style over time sorry I just had a knock at the door but um, just the posty but uh, what I was saying was yeah if you start with the structure and the form then once you understand that all the characteristics of your style start to come into play. Do you want to do thinner brush strokes, thicker brush strokes, change the color contextually, change the size, um, you know, vary different elements of the painting, uh, uh, like, so, you know, there's, there's, there's so many different ways that you can explore your style, but the first thing is to kind of have an accurate interpretation of just the structure of something. And I feel like this is a problem even I have lately, like I'm not sure how much to loosen it up, how much to, you know, try for realism. So it's, it's, a, it's a tricky sort of path and I think it develops over time with just sort of trying your hardest with each painting. Take your time, um, you know, and don't worry if it doesn't work out, you can try again, that's the beauty of it. So we're starting this petal with a mix of the Sedona and the Lilac and you can see as always I like to start with uh, a very light wash I, I always start lighter and then start building up I'm building up around the edges I'm building up with a little bit more Sedona in the mix and on towards the center and a little bit more Lilac towards the outer petal I'm starting to create those small color shifts and the you know uh, the varying like the slight variations in color tone across the petal and I think if you look at a flower uh, that's kind of what you'll see just slight variations unless there are some really dark shadows or you know a color a petal that's like got a lot of color variation So you can see me blotting some off here and again I, I wasn't exactly sure when I started this I kind of had an idea of the colors that I wanted to use these moody dusky mixtures and I wanted to do this uh, which I'm just doing now so this is just 
outlining the other flower in the Sioux Light. So this is one good way that you can um, create white florals or white in paintings to outline it and to use that negative space as the white. So uh, I am putting a whole wash of Sugalite down. So again, I put a light wash down and I just keep adding and adding to it. And so another thing I'm doing with this wash is I'm not putting color to the edge of the water. So I'm putting water down and then I let the color flow as far as it wants into the water. I, and that creates a really nice gradual soft edge onto your page. Okay, so you can see I've mixed up another color for the bottom of these petals. So I'm going to do again a slight color shift. We're still in the same range. So we're doing the burnt siennas, the violets, and also uh, I think I used Van Dyke brown there as well. So a dark brown. So as many purples and browns that you have, you can mix them and create these sort of dusky, moody colors. Okay, so you can see I've moved back over to the bottom of the white flowers now and, and again I move around the painting based on what is dry and what is still, you know, drying. So if it's wet I leave it alone and then unless I want the colours to bleed, like that's a stylistic choice as well, but in this case I don't. I'm just moving around once I need the petal, you know, if I do the petal next to a petal and I need that to dry then I just go to another part of the painting and so you can see here that I am doing some bold for me bold brush strokes and uh, I am just starting to put in some shadows and some color variation in these white in this white flower
So you can see I am gradually uh, and delicately working up the shadow areas and now I'm putting some just straight purple, some a little bit of a pop of colour there, some straight lilac into the uh, flower just to give it a bit of dimension and uh, to sort of make it stand out a little bit. But again these are very pale flowers so I'm not putting much colour on and uh, then the next thing we're going to do I think is the veins which which really makes the whole flower come to life. Okay, so I wasn't super happy with the colors in the middle of this like I said I was trying this out this is my first go so I you know wasn't really sure what to choose what to do or how to work this uh, and I did want to make contrast there because I wanted to you know the whiteness of the petals to stand out more so one way to do that as well is to bring something else into view that shows the, the level of contrast
Okay, so now we're doing what's become one of my favorite parts of the painting and getting a, a smaller paintbrush and just going around very delicately and lightly and lining some of the, you know, petals or some of the contours of the shape and then softening that out into the painting. So you can see here I have, I, I practiced, I sort of tried the petals on the one side off camera and I, you basically just pulling out a line and then pulling out a sort of V, just a smaller V from one part of it and then pulling out another line, doing a small V. So uh, for this side, I wanted to actually use my left hand because it's very tricky to get the line to stop, at, you know, at a find a point when you're using your right hand now one way to do it is to turn the painting around but for the sake of you know and then you can just use your right hand but for the sake of the video I wanted to do it where you could see it you know properly so I'm using my left hand it's a bit of a struggle here um, and the lines go a little bit wobbly but I don't mind it um, Leon Engelin is one of our favorite painters and he always says use if you're right-handed use your left hand to paint if you're left-handed use your right hand to paint and he said that you know you get a more painterly effect that way as well so you know it's it was an interesting experience and I actually didn't mind it At this point I'm just putting some finishing touches on uh, you know the, the middle of the flower the petals and then we'll sort of step back and look at it Okay, and this is the part of the painting that I want to show you uh, that I didn't sketch out the second flower very well. So you can see here the second one. So the, the one more right that I'm showing you is uh, the, the bottom of the petal, the bottom of the flower is too far. So it should just be a third of the flower and it's almost half of the flower. Whereas the one on the left is the right proportion. And because of where I sit, and you know, I, I can't see unless I sort of pull the book onto my knee or unless I sort of put my head in front of the camera, I didn't really check that properly. And so I was really unhappy with um, the distance there between sort of the middle of that flower anyway. So that's just one little thing. You do want to make sure that before you start painting, you're happy with your sketch. You can see I wasn't happy and I covered it up with the water cup there and um, I am just swatching out the colours that we used there in the mixes 
and um, yeah the, the, the flower that you can see there is the right proportions it's the right shape and it's the one I sketched first and then you know I just didn't uh, take enough attention to the second one but I do like the way the whole composition came out with um, you know the dark behind it and so you can see how you could create a more white flower or you can see how you can create one with just a little bit more of uh, pale petals and just a really pretty colors and I'm not sure if I showed it but you can see I've added a little bit of sparkle a bit of a sprinkling of sparkle there on the petals and I also tried these ones they didn't really come out I was really I'm really inspired by Stephen Meyer's uh, x-ray flowers and um, I found them about 10 years ago and I'm just so excited that I can paint something transparent like that so I was trying a dark center like his flowers you know as if they're photographed but I, I just didn't like it so I tried again with the next flower and anyway it's <laughs> you know it's something um, but I do like the color range so you can see a different sort of color scope there you know if you wanted to change the colors of what we did today there's so many different variations you can do so i'm just going to leave you with a little bit of footage of the flowers that actually inspired this tutorial we had some orchids and the petals actually sparkle in the night so that's what i wanted to show you i think it's really exciting to have flowers that you know that is in nature that that amazing sparkle so i love to use it as well and it's it's there for us so it's really beautiful and that's what inspired this and anyway i hope you guys are doing well and i will see you in my next video bye